So, once I was scrolling through TikTok, I came across a controversial video of the Critics' Choice Award for Best Original Song, I'm Just Ken, from the 2023 Barbie movie directed by Greta Gerwig. The award garnered controversy because the song was intended to be a joke song rather than the, what would have been a better choice, What Was I Made For, also from the Barbie movie. I mean, it's a movie about women's struggles, and What Was I Made For was about that. Even Ryan Reynolds himself was confused. So, like a mature person, I, and I, I just sat down to think about it. Just kidding. It's not a Care Bear episode. It's cancel culture. And said I immediately jumped to the comment section to rage about how what was I made for was a song with a deep meaning that made people cry. I had enough of Ken. After my rage dissipated, <laughs> I began to ponder why I was so mad in the first place. What about what was I made for made the song seem better than I'm just Ken? Well, the answer is both songs impacted people in different ways. I'm just Ken caused people to laugh, so people liked it. What was I made for made people cry, so they empathized with it. Both songs were good, and dependent on the listener, they might prefer one over the other. We now know that What Was I Made For won the Oscars. Seeing that was pleasing, but I still had the itch to connect the reasons behind different opinions. People often assume that music is something only an artistic person can appreciate deeply. Yet, music is a powerful tool for self-expression and personal growth that can inspire positive change in our lives, whether or not the song has an inspiring message. Songs we listen to don't need to be deep to impact us, and in fact, we tend to like songs because they are relevant to our time. In my personal experience, I developed my taste based on several variations of songs I found through social media, the car radio, and what people around me were talking about. Due to technology, we see the impact the world around us has on our preferences. The National Library of Medicine tells us music is multifaceted and it is composed of specific auditory properties and communicates emotions and has strong social connotations. There are evidence that research concerned with various social, psychological, physiological aspects of music, not with music preferences per se, but suggesting that preferences are tied to various musical facets. So, to put it simply, they are telling us that music tastes have relied on specific sounds and are strongly tied to current social norms. They go on to separate the auditory aspects and how they rely on trends of music to come together. Different genres have magical power to speak to us based on cultural relevance. In 1994, there were general social surveys conducted by Tom W. Smith of the National Opinion Research Center. That begged the question, what is your musical preference? With the responses flooding in, he discovered, in his words, each of the 17 trends shows patterns of change that closely match the historical ebb and flow of musical tastes, and many show shifts in both absolute and relative musical popularity. This experiment gives us inside knowledge on how generations shift their tastes over time, and how tastes usually flow within the lines of what's popular, whether or not that's the only contending factor. Smith directs our attention to why songs might not be popular, but are popular for aligning with the types of songs for the current era. The experiment shows how, as we evolve, the music does as well. Similar to how jazz, or songs like that, were widely enjoyed in the 1920s and 30s. That is also why many of us aren't listening to songs like Piano Sonata No. 14 by Beethoven today. You see, music isn't just something we listen to. It's a time machine that transports us to different eras and cultures, giving us a glimpse into the hearts and souls of people from all walks of life. From ancient tribal chants to classical symphonies and modern day bops, music has been a constant companion on humanity's journey through time. Through the progression of simple cultural music that passes through countries people immigrate to, is a phenomenon. It is seen in ways people can listen to songs from other countries despite being on opposite sides of the world. 
like how K-pop from South Korea is widely loved in America. It's like a universal language that transcends barriers and speaks to our souls in ways words simply can't. Music has the incredible power to create shared experiences and forge lasting connections. It's like a musical glue that binds us together, transcending differences in age, background, and culture. Through the fusion of music, genres, and the celebration of diverse traditions, music has a way of breaking down barriers and fostering understanding between people from all walks of life. I have loved music for so long now. My earliest memories of music are when I was five years old. I was dancing in the TV room to the song from Taylor Swift, Shake It Off. I was in chorus throughout lower school and participated in virtually all the musicals once I was allowed to in third grade. I finished my last musical here not long ago. I explained earlier that my tastes in music have constantly changed. When I find a new preferred song, I will listen to it on a loop and then move on to the next one. I have no favorite song because it changes so often. Looking at the music I listen to in my life and the methods of finding them though, I see a bigger picture. Music is a form of communication that always evolves, just as the dictionary updates yearly or trends come and go. The music we enjoy in our era relies on our ever-changing society. I felt that music has given me a reason to live. And although others' passions might not be as intense as mine, I can say with confidence that a great majority of the human race has at least, as a whole, likely heard one form of music. In fact, in just America, according to Nelson Music 360, around 90% of the population listens to music. When I think of our opinions on music as a culture, the trends never relied on the morality or emotions within songs. It has always been about our society and how we evolve as one. So looking at I'm Just Ken with these views, the song aligns with our era's main style of music, pop music. What Was I Made For was a song that was more in-depth and emotional, and due to such factors, it won at the Oscars, which awards more artistic songs. Our world changes constantly, and so do we. The music we listen to isn't always based on the underlying intent behind it, and there is no shame in that. A song is a song, whether or not it's deep and expressive. The song we listen to don't define us, we define them. Now, with all that said, I'll listen to I'm Just Ken on the car ride home. Thank you.